Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. Make sure you hit subscribe and the notification bell before you go any further and realize that this is absolute fucking garbage. If this is not your first time here, you may need to seek some professional help. But in either case, thank you very much for coming along. I do really appreciate you being here and watching this absolute fucking nonsense with me. Today's deck profile, we are taking a look at Unchained. People really do underestimate the ability of this deck. It's certainly not a top tier deck, but it is certainly a really good meta pick for the most part, certainly at a rogue level and maybe even marginally above. Today's build has a little bit of a fun twist in it, but it's certainly just one particular card and you could definitely omit that if you wanted to make it something a little bit more serious. If you are watching today's video and you really do consider picking up the cards, you should check out Jam Jam Cards UK. They are the channel sponsors and there is a link in the description to their eBay store, which will net you a cheeky discount on their Yu-Gi-Oh! singles. It's also worth noting they don't just do Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, so if you're interested in Pokemon, they have those as well. But that's enough waffling on from me, let's get stuck in to the deck profile. So just a few things I'd like to address before we get started in the video. Apologies if there are any crazy noises in the background. It's windy as fuck outside. It's been snowing on and off all day and it sent the horses next door absolutely ape shit. So if you can hear any of that, my apologies. Also, my laptop fan is really fucking loud at times. I will try to edit that all out in the video. But the main thing you're probably noticing here is Magical Hats. Yes, it's here for a little bit of fun, but if you've actually played with it, it's actually low-key kind of good. Nobody in the world is setting up for Magical Hats, and the fact that it can destroy these spells and traps and set up all kinds of other effects is actually kind of cool. If you want to take your life a little bit more seriously, and you probably shouldn't be on this channel if you do, you could play something else instead. But we're getting a little bit off track here. Let's get stuck into the actual profile for you. So I'm going to assume here that you're at least somewhat familiar on how all of the Unchained stuff works. So we're going to talk a little bit more about ratios and that kind of thing as we go on. So we're running triple copies of all of the main lots of twins here. Aruha, Reiki, or whatever the fuck it's called, and Sarama. I think the three of each of those is pretty much perfect. These are going to be the ones that you really want to see in your hand as much as possible. They also float like crazy and that's what you really want to be able to do with this deck in order to allow you to link climb and generate all the advantage and destruction that this deck really does. I think just two copies of Unchained Soul and a single copy of Soul of Disaster are all that you really need in this deck. You can up them if you really feel the need to, but honestly I think that this ratio here is pretty much perfect and more or less standard across the board. We are playing a small lineup of hand traps here, triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, pretty much mandatory in almost every single format, even in decks that you would probably cut all your other hand traps from. Ash Blossom absolutely rinses rogue decks that you're going to play against, so something that you need to have in there. And even against the top-end meta decks, it at least has some ability to affect them. Ghost Spell certainly a good option at the moment in the format, especially at the time of recording. Again, you could omit this in favour of more back row if you really wanted to do that. That is the way the deck is generally kind of geared to go towards. But if you decided not to play this, that's entirely up to you. Running triple copies of Abominations Prison, you need to play this card at three. It searches basically everything you need to get your plays started. We're running triple copies of Part of Desires. There are many builds out there that are running Extravagance instead. That's entirely up to you. I've opted not to go for it here. I think Part of Desires does a fairly good job in and of itself. And it means that we can have a lot more utility in the extra deck to take advantage of. However, if you want to play a more concise version, probably a slightly more competitive build, then you could go for the Extravagance version instead. Running a single copy of Upstart Goblin here because 39 cards is almost always better than 40. We're running a single copy of Wailing of the Unchained Souls. A lot of people are cutting this from their builds that I've seen. Honestly, I think one copy is really nice here. Just being able to pop extra cards is a really nice interrupt to have. Escape of the Unchained, being able to pop cards and then get advantage off of that is just a really nice option. Just two copies of that for me in here. Again, you can play a third if you really wanted to, but I think two is perfectly sufficient. It also means that you can resolve Trap Trick and get this out if you need to just see the single copy. Chamber of the Unchained is really, really cool. Being able to special summon cards no matter what happens with it is absolutely fucking insane. And as such, three copies of this absolutely mandatory. You want to open it if you really can, but of course you can get it off Trap Trick as well. With that in mind, we are also running triple copies of Trap Trick, as discussed. There are so many good targets for this in the deck that you really do need to run this at three. Triple copies of Torrential Tribute here. Again, blowing up your own monsters really doesn't fucking matter in this deck. It's really, really cool. Torrential Tribute is really strong at the moment in the modern format. 
being able to pop all your own cards, being able to pop all your mo opponent's monsters, really, really good. And as briefly mentioned earlier, Magical Hat's a really cool option to play in here. More of a casual choice, but certainly a very fun one that does go off quite well. But if you want something more competitive, you can definitely cut this from the deck. And before we move on to our extra deck here, just a quick note about the side deck. It's entirely up to you what you want to play. It depends on the format you're playing in. As such, we haven't included that here. Also because of longevity, side decks kind of are changing from week to week, from month to month with each new set release. And as such, become outdated very quickly. But largely, the main and extra decks stay relatively similar. But with that in mind, we're moving straight on to the extra deck here. So Axis Code Talker, pretty self-explanatory, a bit of an OTK machine. Zeroboros can really cuck certain kinds of decks. Uh, just a really good option to have in there for utility. We're running a slightly bigger than normal Nightmare package here. We have Nightmare Phoenix, Unicorn, and Griffin because we're running so many different targets in here that you can kip up with this and really go ahead with. This can actually help set up your boards. You can link into it during your opponent's turn. You can draw cards. You can switch off their effects. A really good option to have in there. But of course, you could swap this out for something else if you prefer. A single copy of Triz Baner, although this can kind of hurt you as well if you're not very careful. There are other back row heavy decks out there quite a bit at the moment in this format. And as such, having this option in there is a really good one. IP Masquerader, because interrupting your opponent more than you normally do is always fucking nice. Running two copies of each of the Unchained Extra Deck Monsters, you could opt for more of these, especially if you're running an Extrav build, you'd probably run three copies of each. I think two of each is perfectly fine for this particular build, though. That's entirely up to you if you want to change that up. And then for our final two utility cards here, we've got Dingesu, because he can be made quite easily, and a single copy of Sanafon for switching off the opponent's graveyard. And that is all for today's video. Thank you very much for coming along. Hopefully you've enjoyed it enough to have stuck around, hit subscribe and the notification bell, or hated it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. In either of those scenarios, I do really appreciate you being here. Thank you very much for coming along. Definitely let me know down in the comments what you thought of the video. It is worth noting as well that we don't just do deck profiles on here, contrary to the current run of form, which is a little bit dry due to the lack of content, due to that little uh, thing that's going around that's kind of fucking up the world at the moment that I can't say without getting demonetized. But if there's other content that you'd like to see, we normally do how to play videos, combo tutorials, and all that other good stuff. And if there is something you'd like to see, definitely let me know that as well. I do try to take the time to read as many comments as possible. But again, thank you very much for coming along. I do really appreciate you being here, and I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.